Netmotion Wireless. Today in this video series, we're going to talk about Netmotion Wireless's pilot product, Netmotion Mobility. Netmotion Mobility is the world's first truly intelligent mobile VPN. We focus on four key elements to making a mobile deployment successful. Connectivity, visibility, control, and diagnostics. To really understand how these four components come into play and how Netmotion Mobility can help improve these components, let's look at the typical day in the life of a truly mobile worker. First off, Netmotion Mobility starts up as a service. This means several key things. One, usability for the end user. Because Netmotion Mobility is always running in the background, the user doesn't have to think to turn on the VPN when they need to access particular resources. Next, security. Because Netmotion Mobility is always running, as soon as the user logs onto their device, their device is actually put on the network. What that means is any security policies applied inside the four walls are applied outside the four walls. This ensures that a user doesn't browse the internet inadvertently, potentially pick up a virus, and then bring that virus into the network because all of the security controls inside the network are being applied. Next, we can do enhanced security. What this means is we can do more than just a standard username and password. We essentially support any strong authentication out there, any two-factor type authentication. We can also perform a pure network access control check. So authentication validates the user. Network access control can validate the integrity of the device. We can look at things such as making sure your antivirus is up to date, a personal firewall is running and turned on, and for other key patches. Next, as the mobile worker begins their day, they've started their application, they've logged in, gotten their work orders or, or whatever they, they do for their job, and they've left the network. At this point, we can do what's known as application session persistence. What we can do is we can actually keep the user connected to the applications even when the network goes away. What we're doing on the client side is we're essentially tricking the application into thinking that the network is still there. And back on the server side inside the corporate network, we're keeping the connection alive to the application itself. Next, that worker has now come into a new location. Maybe they've gotten a phone call that they need to log back in and, and get another work order, or they need to pull down another work order, or maybe they're in the middle of a file transfer and they decided they were gonna come into a network to let that continue because of session persistence. At this point, we can do what's called intelligent roaming. We've gone from the user's home network, we've, we've persisted the application to no network, and now we've come into a completely different network and we will automatically build the tunnel back up and link the user back with their application exactly where we, they left off. This includes if they're in the middle of a transaction, no data will be lost. The transaction will continue right when they come back into a new network. Another feature is really data op optimization. Because of our protocol and some of the other compression components we do, we can drastically improve performance. We can do this in two ways. One, we can see performance imp improvements over slow networks. Two, we can also reduce the amount of traffic that is going over these slow networks. So not only does that improve the overall performance, but it can also increase your data plan because we're sending less data. We've seen one to three times performance improvements, especially over slower networks. Another thing we can do is what's called best bandwidth selection. With best bandwidth selection, if there are multiple interfaces available, in this case, broadband, as well as Wi-Fi, we will actually choose the fastest interface and automatically build the tunnel over that interface. All of this is done through a centralized management console. This console can manage multiple servers in a pool with a single web interface. In addition, we have a full reporting module so you can see historical data of what users have been doing, what networks have they accessed, how, how have they been connected throughout the day, where have they had problems. You can even th see things such as what access points have they been connecting from. We also integrate with our diagnostics product. What this means is that in the event of a connection problem, we can automatically run a series of, of diagnostics tests and give that information to the IT help desk so they can begin troubleshooting where the problem exists rather than relying on the end user to do the troubleshooting for them. We also have a full policy management module. 
What policy management does is policies are created centrally and pushed out to devices, users, or globally. They're pushed out real time. The nice thing about our policy management module is policies are enforced on the client. What this means is that if I'm going to block traffic for a particular application, it's actually blocked on the client itself. In a traditional VPN, this traffic would still be sent up to the server and blocked at the server, which it really is not helping you on a slow bandwidth connection because the traffic is still being pushed across. We can also do some traffic shaping within the tunnel. If you think about a typical network tunnel of, of different applications trying to access the network, they all have the same priority. And in some cases, those that are the most bandwidth hungry will actually get higher priority because they're sending more and more packets and potentially sending more smaller packets. What we can do is we can actually prioritize the applications within the tunnel. This gives you the ability to maybe allow certain applications that you wouldn't normally allow, such as streaming video, but you can prioritize your mission critical application. So even in the event that someone is streaming a video, if they then need to get in their workforce application or their field worker application, that will take the highest priority and they'll be able to do their job. Now let's go in and, and actually show the product at work. First, let's take a look at visibility. Again, thinking of those four pillars, connectivity, visibility, control, and diagnostics, let's take a look at visibility. This is our mobility management console. In this console, I can see lots of information about my mobile deployment. I can see the total number of devices I have in my mobile deployment is 251, and currently 14 of them are connected. I also see information about my servers in the pool and the status of those servers, as well as number of connections on those servers. Let's drill into a device. If I click on the connected devices and choose a particular device, I can see real time lots of information about what that device is doing. I can see that it's connected on wireless. I can see the local network that it's connecting from. I can see the first time it connected to this particular server pool. I can also scroll down and I can see information about applications running on that device. Again, this is a real-time view into the device itself. This is a great troubleshooting tool. In the event a user may call in with a particular problem, the help desk has the ability to log on to that device, see real-time applications, and they may see some applications that maybe they didn't expect such as Spotify, and maybe that is the root of the, of the problem. In addition to visibility, we also have an analytics module that gives us historical data. So in this case, I could run a report, for example, of network usage by application, and let's look at yesterday's ap application traffic, and with a few clicks, I can quickly generate a, a nice report that shows, in this case, my top 10 applications. If I look, I can see the different applications that were run, and again, I also see Spotify here. You know, this is where in a mobile deployment, especially a new mobile deployment, it may, it may surprise the help desk or the, the security administrator, the applications that users may be running in the field. Again, thinking of wanting the users to feel like the device you gave them is their own, a lot of times you want to allow these applications, but maybe you want to use control to control when they're allowed or on what networks they're allowed. Another report I can look at is connection status. Let's look at yesterday. Connection status gives me a view into the connectivity part or productivity part of my deployment. If I see all blue, that's great. That means that during that entire time period, that user was connected and did not have any network issues. However, if I look at the two bars, I can see both of these devices had sporadic connectivity. Now, the nice thing here is even while they, they were disconnected, this is where we were doing the application session persistence. So although this user was disconnected from the network, we kept them connected to their applications. So when they came back into a network, they were right where they left off. Now let's take a look at connectivity. And it really, when you think connectivity, connectivity really truly means productivity. In this case, what I've got running on the left is simply a telnet session back to a computer, back inside the network, and all it's doing is it's showing the time every second. On the right, I'm showing the mobility client. The mobility client, you can see, has several information that is useful to me. I've got my virtual address, which is the address inside the network, and I've got my local point of presence address. That's the address of the network that I am currently connected on. Now, if you know anything about Telnet, Telnet is very network intolerant. 
meaning if there's any problems in the network, the Telnet session will essentially crash. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate application session persistence. If you notice now, I've lost connection to my Wi-Fi. Several things are happening here. If you see, the mobility agent is essentially frozen and in an unreachable state. What it's doing is it's waiting for another network to come available. On the left, the Telnet session has been paused. Again, this is the application session persistence. Now, if you noticed, it paused at 9.22 and 10 seconds. Now, I could actually do this session persistence literally for days if I wanted to. A typical session persistence may only last a few minutes or potentially hours if, if needed, but it is fully configurable. Now, when I come back into a network, in this case, I'm connected back to my Wi-Fi, you can see the application immediately is back where it left off. And if I scroll back to the time, I didn't lose any data. This again is the ability to keep connected to the application as well as on the server side, we are actually caching data if the application itself is sending us data back. And now let's take a look at control. We, if, if we remember earlier in the video, we knew that Spotify was running on this particular device and you can see it's running down here. On the right, if I look at my mobility agent, I'm now looking at a different part of the agent called details. Under details, I can see I'm currently not subscribed to any policy rule sets. That means essentially I can do anything. With control, I can control what applications a user can run. I can control and prioritize applications. I can block applications. I can block applications on certain networks. I have a lot of control over the user experience as well as the security of what that user is doing. So let's, uh, let's subscribe a policy to this user. So in this case, I choose the user, I hit subscribe. Now I could have subscribed this to the device. The advantage to, of this subscribing it to a user means regardless of what device I log on to, this policy will be applied. In some cases, it may be that you wanna have specific policies for specific types of devices. For example, maybe your Windows devices have one type of policy, but your iOS or Android devices have a completely different policy. In this case, I just want a global policy applied to this particular user. What I'm going to do is I'm going to block streaming music. Now, what's important to take a look at is look at the policy rule set here. This is an agent that I am in a remote location connecting back to a server back at the corporate office. What I can do, again, is real time, I can push this out. When I click the OK button, you'll see it's instantly pushed out to the, the client. And now, in this case, Spotify is being blocked. So the advantage to this is I can immediately push out a policy to a device globally, a group of devices, a group of users, or in this case, a particular user. And now let's take a look at network access control. Again, network access control validates the integrity of the device. It can also be used for control. Just like policy, it's very similar to apply network access control rule by simply subscribing a user to that rule. What I will do is I'll choose my user, again, just like policy. This could be a group of devices, it could be a particular user, or it could be global. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subscribe this particular user to this policy. Again, if looking at my agent, you can see I currently don't have any NAC rule sets. So if I apply the rule set, just like policy, it is pushed out real time. And you can see immediately I failed the NAC check. With NAC, you have several options. When you first push it out, it's going to immediately do a complete network access control check based on the rules that you've defined. You can also configure how often this check is performed. You don't want to only perform this when the, the device first connects, because in some cases, if you're looking for, say, a personal firewall, you want to make sure that's always running. So you can tweak it down to actually every minute validate if that personal firewall is running, or maybe you set it for every 10 minutes. But again, it's important to be able to constantly check that rule check because you want to make sure the integrity of the device does not change. In the event it does change, you can tie NAC into policy and immediately make changes around what the user can and can't do. It is entirely up to you if you want to give the user any status about network access control. Depending on your security policy, you may want to give them the information to remediate themselves, or you may not. In some cases, 
that is looked at as a security concern. In other cases, you may just want to display a message that says, please call the help desk. Again, in summary, NetMotion Mobility is the world's first truly intelligent mobile VPN. Focused on four pillars for, to a successful mobile deployment, connectivity, visibility, control, and diagnostics.